Right, I'm going to settle back and uh, I'll catch up with you down the road a few miles when the scenery's changed a bit. Okay, wind on a few miles and, uh, okay, the scenery hasn't changed that much, but it's so lovely down here by the water's edge. I love riding uh, roads like this. And uh, actually this bit, not only does it remind me of uh, some of those roads in Norway, but also that uh, road up the side of Loch Lomond in Scotland. The A87, is it? Something like that. That runs up alongside, Sim very similar sort of road. Beautiful. Once again, lots of little picturesque churches around the villages and so on here. But anyway, while we're tracking south, I just wanted to tell you a bit about uh, last night. I didn't uh, actually take the camera down to uh, supper. Uh, maybe I should have done, actually. Perhaps I should do that tonight. But uh, Momo did us proud. Uh, not only did he come riding with us yesterday, but as I mentioned before, he's the uh, chef at the hotel. Well, in fact, he's the uh, proprietor of the hotel. And, uh, did us a great meal, and that's the uh, beauty of this trip. Again, it's all sorted out for you. Bed, breakfast and evening meals included. And, uh, the food here is excellent. And when you're out for lunch, as I said yesterday, really reasonably priced. So last night it was like a selection of grilled meats, which was very nice. The night before that we had um, sort of stuffed peppers, stuffed with a sort of a mixed meat mince. It may not sound that appetising, but believe me, it was really nice. Mr GS man, good day sir. So you know worries when it comes to food. There's nothing too unusual or spicy or odd, it's just good, proper, wholesome food. Gives you plenty of energy for the day on the bike. Little vineyard up by that castle on the right, just in the steps there by the looks of it. I don't think I've tried any Slovenian wine yet, I must try and put that right today. Not when I'm on the bike, but maybe this evening. I know there's a police van. There are a few of those dotted around we've seen in the various towns and villages. Yesterday we passed a, um, a fake one. <laughs> It's a police vehicle and then a, uh, for want of a better word, a, a dummy of a policeman holding a speed gun. It certainly had the desired effect of slowing us all down. By the time you realise it's not real, you've slowed down, so it worked. The first hoffer of the day. <laughs> I don't know why I get so excited about seeing foreign Aldis. This makes me wonder what Aldi must mean in Slovenian. I must ask uh, Pete that later. Maybe it doesn't mean anything doesn't in English as far as I know except cheap shopping of which I'm a fan right it's starting to get more forested up here now now I know what you're thinking how am I getting on with the uh, big old Honda Cross Tourer now I've been riding it for a few hundred miles well I will bring you a little review of the bike uh, and you may have already seen that by the time you see this video or if you haven't it's coming it'll be in the schedule somewhere so I'll give you all the details of the spec and so on then but just as a kind of an overview as a big Tourer it's great once you're moving, I mean, it's got this big old 1200cc uh, V4 engine, so it's got plenty of go and plenty of comfort as well. Seat's nice and comfortable, and the handlebars are placed where they should be and all that. It feels actually a bit like the GS seating position, which I like. But the big downside with it, as far as I'm concerned, is its weight. I think it's something like 287 kilograms, so it's about 50 kilograms heavier than a GS. Uh, and when you're moving, that doesn't make any difference, but when you stop, it does feel a bit ponderous. I'm not that confident moving it around. And as this is Momo's personal bike that he's very kindly lent me, <laughs> I certainly don't want to be dropping it. Hello, sir. More waivers, always good to see. But overall, yeah, a lovely bike for this sort of work. But uh, not for me, I think, just due to its weight. And it's a little bit tall for me as well, at five foot eight. In terms of the bikes that you can uh, ride if you choose to come over to Slovenia with uh, CM Tours Slovenia, as uh, my pals are calling the company. Check them out on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and, of course, website as well. I'm sure there'll be a link from their Canary Motorcycle Tours website. I'm sure you can get there that way as well. But the bikes they're going to be offering uh, on these tours next year, I think Martin said they're getting a Triumph Tiger 800, which I think would be perfect for this sort of thing. They're getting a BMW F800 GS and, I think, one or two Hondas. I can't remember which type, but uh, Hondas that... Uh, Martin knows well the type I first rode when I went to uh, Grand Canaria in fact. So a choice, a variety of bikes and different heights and sizes as well depending on you know your preference there should be something there that will suit you for this sort of riding. If you choose to come on over. Oh this is lovely through here and at 23 degrees absolutely perfect riding temperature. If you stayed like this all day it would be brilliant. Yes it'd be nice to see a bit more sun but uh, Goodness me, yesterday 
it was hot. This reminds me a bit now of Devon minus the caravans. That's got to be a good thing, surely. What a fabulous road. One thing I have noticed about this uh, cross tour that surprised me a little bit because it's got such a big engine, you'd think, and it's got a lot of torque, you'd think it would uh, just burble along a bit like, uh, again, just referencing back to my GS, which is obviously a similar bike that I know well. On that, you can set it in like third gear and off you go, and you're, or fourth or fifth, and it'll just pull away pretty much in any gear. With this, I'm finding I'm having to stir the gearbox quite a lot more. I don't know if that's down to the characteristics of the four cylinder engine versus the twin, perhaps. But certainly to make it feel happy, I'm finding I'm having to change down a lot more than I'm used to. I think if I was going the cross tour route, I'd be very tempted to go DCT. Pete up front on his Africa Twin, that's the uh, DCT version. And he absolutely swears by it, and he's a, you know, he's a proper biker. <laughs> by which I mean he's been riding all his life and has, he owns many bikes, including sports bikes and stuff. Yet he finds for this sort of riding, he was saying, DCT on the Africa Twin is absolutely perfect. There are a lot of good things about the Africa Twin, don't you? I must admit, I do like them. When I rode the Africa Twin Adventure Sport, I thought it was an exceptionally good bike. Just again, the Adventure Sport was just too tall for me, because that's even taller than the standard bike. I think uh, what Pete's riding is the, is the standard bike, which would be the one I would go for. It does make you wonder actually about Honda's strategy there, doesn't it, when they've got things like this cross tour and the Africa Twin. I know they're slightly different bikes, this one has no off-road pretensions, whereas the Africa Twin is pretty capable off-road. Given the choice of the two, I'd definitely have the Africa Twin. That's just my personal preference. OK, wending our way south, Mokrunog. I'm sure that's not how you pronounce it. Apologies to Slovenian uh, viewers. Sounds more like a Klingon settlement, doesn't it? Mochranog. Anyway, fair enough, I haven't seen a single Klingon since I've been here. Generally speaking, I mean, this is the, one of the most major towns we've been through so far. I was going to say it feels a lot more rural down here to the south, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I'm very excited today, actually. One of the highlights for me is going to be going into Croatia, which is uh, another country that I've never ridden in. Hello. KTM is very popular here, I guess not uh, surprising. It's being an Austrian brand, maybe there's some loyalty there, I don't know. Pete was saying that uh, yesterday that KTMs and Ducatis are very popular here. One or two Triumphs, he was saying, but uh, generally those are the brands that you see. Not so many Japanese bikes. Interesting how times have changed, isn't it? Particularly in Europe. It's the same in the UK, I guess. You now see just as many non-Japanese bikes as you do Japanese, and which is great. Because 30 years ago, they absolutely had the run of the market, didn't they? And without wishing to be unkind to any particular Japanese manufacturer, I think with the exception of maybe Yamaha, who have really upped their game of late, particularly with these sort of MT series. When I say of late, I mean in the last five years. The other, the other manufacturers, I don't know. Particularly the Suzukis of the world don't seem to be getting it quite right at the moment. Honda have done well with the Africa Twin, but I think, I don't know what sales are like, but uh, so, you know, this is all based on no fact whatsoever, just my own personal preference and observation. But other than that, there's not much else in the range, is there, that's uh, really outstanding that I can think of. I might be missing out some key bikes here. Kawasaki, similarly. Nothing wrong with any Kawasaki, they're all good bikes, but there's nothing there that I can think of that immediately makes me think, oh yeah, that is, that's the bike to have. You know, they don't tend to have class leaders, the Japanese, anymore, do they? Feels more like they're starting to follow. And it's the European brands that have that sort of unique selling point. Ducati for their beautiful sports bikes, maybe. Triumph now for the, just the quality of their retros, maybe. KTM for their off-road prowess. All the European manufacturers seem to have something that they're all about. How times change, eh? I'm sure it will change again in the future. Let's review that situation in five 
10 years time, see where we are. Okay, I'm guessing this is the river Bistrika we're crossing. Once again, everything looking so clean and tidy. How come Slovenia can get that right, but we struggle. Might be to do with population density, to be fair. There's an awful lot more people in England there than there are in Slovenia. Typical of these settlements that we've been riding through this morning. Yeah, there we go, Rakovnik. The roads are just cracking here though, a bit like Spain. Everyone a winner, you know, you can pretty much go anywhere and the roads are good. Okay, the surfaces can be variable. In the main, the surfaces are pretty good here. But there are roads like this where they've done some patching up and I've found once or twice on the overbanding, the joins between the old and new tarmac, I felt the bike slip a little bit under me. So you have to be a bit wary of that. And once that happens once or twice, you lose a little bit of your confidence. And there's been things like uh, the odd manhole cover, inspection cover, right on a corner when you're leant over, which always gives me the willies. But here we are again now, look, in that short time, this road has suddenly changed into a beautiful wooded tarmac. Hello, sir. And it's just a joy to ride. With very few straight roads amongst them, he says, turning onto a straight bit. But in the main, they're really nice open sweepers. And the other great thing about riding in Slovenia, again like Spain, is it's a very motorcycle friendly country it seems to be. Drivers seem to expect motorcycles more and are courteous, you know, will pull over for you to cross by. And you generally just see a lot more motorbikes on the road than you do in the UK. So come on down, you'll be welcomed. And whilst I'm on a roll call of the good things about Slovenia as well, the people here are just super friendly. I mentioned before I haven't got a lot of experience of former Eastern Bloc countries and uh, the one I've spent most time in I think is probably Russia actually. Uh, and amazing though places like St Petersburg are absolutely stunning. They're not easy places to visit for the Westerner in that, and again apologies to any Russians watching, but uh, they don't tend to be that welcoming of foreigners. And not only that, the language is very difficult to, uh, to follow if you're a Westerner because of course the alphabet and so on is different. Because that absolutely is not the case here in Slovenia. Everybody under the age of 35 speaks excellent English. Not just, you know, tourist restaurant English, but proper English. <laughs> Martin was saying he's been out here a couple of months now and he's never had any difficulty at all with the language. It's just, it's embarrassingly good. Again, a bit like when I did the Norway tour, everybody just speaks perfect English and uh, and they're very friendly with it, and their English is so good, they, you know, they get your sense of humour. Well, at least they laugh at your jokes, so they're good actors <laughs> if they don't. <laughs> so don't think to yourself, oh, that sounds like a bit of a difficult country to get around, because it absolutely isn't. It's one of the easiest countries to visit for the foreigner, I think. I mean, due proximity of all the other European countries, I'll probably go to France more than any other, just because it's next door neighbour over the channel. And let's face it, France isn't a difficult country to get by in. I think Slovenia is even easier than France for the, uh, for the English tourist. And as I mentioned before, only two hours away by aeroplane. Very tempted to put this to the uh, TMF household. Let me come out this way for a family holiday in the not too distant future. It's got an awful lot to offer. Right, bit of blue sky breaking out. Back into the forests and the twisty roads. Lovely. Okay, we've turned off the main road now. We've come up, uh, unfortunately, didn't have the camera on it, but we've come up. Uh, some little tight turns up some pretty narrow little uh, windy lanes I suppose, for want of a better word. It's starting to get a bit more major now, but it's a classic example of where if you came out here on your own you wouldn't necessarily have known to come this way. Because it really is off the beaten track as it were. As we near, I suspect, that first castle that Pete was telling us about. The sky continues to turn blue, which is always a good thing. This is proper Hansel and Gretel country now. <laughs> Let's just hope the big bad wolf isn't at home. Or am I getting my fairy tales mixed up? As long as it's not the three bears, that's more what I'm worried about. Yeah, it does look like potential there. Uh, bear and wolf territory, doesn't it? Both of which are apparently indigenous to this area. So we won't be stopping for a picnic. 
quite, quite a steep descent this has been actually. The GoPro never shows you like it is, but crikey. <laughs> wow, look at this. It's reminding me of Scotland now. Something for everyone. Well, check out that road. <laughs> is that the perfect biking road or what? Superb. One of the other things I've noticed about riding here is to be near, it might just be me, I might be talking rubbish here, but you can ride along with your visor open, which is lovely when it's this sort of temperature. I tend to close it when I'm talking to you because of wind noise. But most of the time I'm riding with the visor open and you don't tend to get many flies in your face. Very, very few. This time of year in England if you're riding, your face would be battered by gnats and blue bottles and wasps and goodness knows what. Seems to be fairly fly free. Which is nice. Right, Zuzenberg. Okay, so by my reckoning, looks suspiciously like we found the spot of our first castle and stop. So we come around this hairpin here. Hopefully, you'll get a view of it. Right, it's still with us. That's our first gear one. And there's the castle, very impressive. And by the river as well. The river Krka, K-R-K-A. Lovely spot. That'll do nicely. Oh, splendid! What a lovely ride through that was, wasn't it? And little bits of Scotland in there, little bits of... Maybe the Black Forest as well. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I've been there yet. No. I'll find out. <laughs> well, there's a bit of debate now as to yeah. whether the... It should be on. It shouldn't be so bright, I think. No. Give it a try. Ah, oh, there we go. Needs adjusting. So yeah. much for Honda reliability, yeah, that's, eh? That's important as well. If you come up to a tight bend, you need to back everybody yes, off. I, I yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's a tight corner, but you didn't I see. didn't notice that, no. There yeah. we go. Crikey. Good job of me, really, isn't it? Yeah, you don't miss a trick, do you? It's so amazing. You go take a coffee? Yeah, coffee time. Well, this is a rather splendid spot, isn't it? So there seems to be a castle up there. What can you tell us about it then, Pete? <laughs> Put you on the spot now. He just said he knew nothing about the castle, so I thought I'd ask him. The, the castle is really too close to where I live, so... Oh, so you know nothing about it. Yeah. It's always a way, isn't it? It's so no, not important to me because I saw it every day. Exactly. But people find it very fascinating and it's uh, restored nicely. Also on the upper part, it's a nice square where... Uh, He's doing well, isn't he? Where he restored is. nicely at a nice yeah. square, well done. Yeah. <laughs> Quality. And, and who, who paid for the restoration? It should be the people of Slovenia. Ex it should EU. be. Yeah, yeah, British, yeah. German and French, I would say. <laughs> Let's not go there, for goodness sake. <laughs> right, okay. I think it was restored before we entered the European Union. All oh, right, okay. okay sure. right, good one, good answer. Okay, there we go. How long out of interest has Slovenia been in the European Union? Is it a new entrant? It's from 2004 or six. And do you fancy leaving? Oh, no, let's not go there. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lovely spot regardless, isn't it? Yeah? So, are you a fisherman yourself? No. Uh, does anybody fish this river? Because it looks like... Fly, fish 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 up, fly fishing. Right, is it yeah. trout and stuff then we're looking at here, I assume? None of us are fishermen, we don't know what no. we're talking about. Looks like a bit of rapid action going on up there, look. You can take boats on this river, like canoes, right. slow riding, and also rafts when, when, when it gets a bit more yeah, exciting. Yeah. Nice spot. It's looks quite like popular. A bit of a campsite going on or something as well. Right, drinks time. I and I think so. I might take a snap at the castle while we're here. Right. Oh, that was an excellent little stop there. Whew, it's warming up now. Bike saying 33, but that's probably because I've been sat in the sunshine. Right, we're just going to uh, head up towards the castle ish and see if we can uh, position the bikes for a snap. Looks great down there. See if we can get a good pick of the bikes with the cast in the background. May or may not be possible. That'll work. Yeah. Think so? Yeah, that could work, couldn't it? 
Yeah, that looks good. Right, let's get me out of the camera. Yeah, perfect. Excellent. Right, bit of snappage. Oh dear, I'm going to turn this beast round. I'll follow him. Looks like he knows what he's doing. Got away with it. Oh! Well, that was a great little stop. Definitely warming up now, but that was a nice little spot there down by the river. And like an idiot, I forgot to ask Peter what his uh, intentions were for the next leg. So, uh, not completely sure where we're uh, aiming for now, but I imagine it'll be about a, an hour's ride before the next stop, which seems very civilised to me. Okay, so we're following along uh, a river just on our right again now, which is uh, always nice to do for some reason, and the temperature, I'm glad to say, has dropped to a more reasonable 28 degrees centigrade. That is certainly not a complaint. With a bit of airflow over your jacket, it's absolutely perfect. But we seem to have picked up a bit of traffic. That's not quite a ticket. And poor old Martin's got caught up in a bit behind us. There are a couple of bikes and some cars and uh, trying to weave his way through. It's all starting to look a bit oldy worldy As we cross yet another river, the Krka, K-R-K-A. Apologies for my pronunciation. Very lovely though. Hello, sir. Now we're into a bit of a climb. More hairpinage. Holly boys are out. And the GS team. Absolutely cracking road this is. I think it's the 214, but I wouldn't like to bet on it. Very twisty little number. It turns out that Pete had a problem, uh, I don't know what's going on here. Looks like he's got some assistance. Pete had a problem on the last leg with his uh, brake light in that it was on all the time and the uh, little micro switch was set too sensibly. He's fixed that now. But it's a real shame because on the tight <laughs> pins before, he had been warning me that it was a tight one coming up by flashing his brake light. And of course I missed all that. But now if I see his light flash, I well, know there's a tight one coming up. I know this must be a good road because since we turned up here I've seen more bikes than cars coming the other way. Always a good sign. The way I make these uh, films are on tour is I don't run the camera all the time, I just turn it on and off as I uh, think that something worth seeing is maybe coming. Uh, and that also is an attempt to sort of save battery. So often what that means is you miss stuff. So I just missed a sign unfortunately that said that we're entering bear country. So uh, <laughs> this is the bit where you don't want to uh, stop to, see, to eat your sandwiches on the side of the road. What's the time? 11.28. So, uh, I don't know. Do bears have their lunch at midday? I suspect they do. Could be their hungry time. Well, if any bears are motorcyclists, they've got a cracking place to ride. Some nice houses down here in bear country. Not sure I want to be uh, <laughs> laying in the back garden sunbathing, though, by the barbecue. Those following on the map, we just passed through Smuka, S-M-U-K-A, and what an absolutely cracking road this is. Loving it. This road is an absolute belter. It just doesn't go straight at any point, it's just got these nice open sweeping corners, which are exactly the sort I like, because you can see what's coming. You can kind of plot and plan your route through, but you're not sort of randomly on and off the brakes, which is what I tend to do when I don't know where I'm going for a bit smoother riding. Really, really nice. So I tried to read what Pete said this morning about the route, and whether this is the uh, leg where we're going to skirt along the top and into Croatia, which would be quite uh, quite fun. Which is a bit of a pain, because my uh, passport's in the top box, so it is. I'll have to stop and get that out. But, uh, no big deal. Well, once again, I didn't have the camera rolling when I wish I had, because I just passed a sign that I've seen several times now. Uh, I don't know what it says under it, because obviously it's in Slovenian, but there's a sort of a graphic picture of a motorcyclist falling off. Uh, so, <laughs> I suspect it's like a known, a 
accident spot or something like that, or it's warning drivers to uh, beware of motorcycles, I don't know, but um, anyway, it always proceeds a nice twisty bit. So it's good and bad news, that sign, I think. If I get to see another one, I'll uh, try and get the camera rolling. Awful lot of cyclists around here. Often the case that cyclists search out the same sort of places that us motorcyclists like to ride. No problem with that. Share and share alike, I say. Just don't be in a gigantic peloton or whatever they call pelican <laughs> and impede me progress. No sign of bears yet. It's past the sign there. I don't know if the camera was uh, rolling in time. It said for the next three and a half kilometres there are gazelles leaping across the road. So that's something different. Makes a change from the old squirrel. Amazing smell of cut pine wood through here. I guess there must be some forestry work going on. It smells amazing. Quick fuel stop. Maybe? No? Perhaps not. What's this all about then? So just when I thought my chances of seeing a bear were pretty slim, turns out there's one here at this restaurant. Uh, seems a bit sad to me, but let's have a look and see if what we can see. Ah. So I don't know if you can see it on the GoPro, but he's asleep in the back there. So what's the story here then? Because this seems a bit sad to me. It is, yeah. Well, I was told by the lady that say, these two bears are very old. Right. And they would uh, they would struggle living out with the, all the wild bears out in the. Uh, Right, that plus it's quite good for business. Well, it's good for business. <laughs> yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, but yeah, anybody looking at this will think this is cruel, but there's it a is two what sides. It is, I suppose. Yeah, it's yeah, a two yeah, sides yeah, yeah. The coin, isn't it? Yeah, could be true, I suppose. Yeah. Not sure if you can actually it's see like it with a GoPro. They're retired. They're enjoying their pension now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah let's think of it like that. Then we don't yeah. feel so bad. Fair Not enough. Bad life, though, is it? No, then. Well, mm -hmm. the cage thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, but this is for us. <laughs> Not for them. Yeah, fair point. <laughs> Right, so that's my bear sighting. I'm hoping that's the one and only. Still a little bit sad if you ask me, but uh, there we go. Right, let's go and get some fuel while we've got the chance. And then we're going to be riding up into a pass, apparently, in Croatia, which sounds rather fun. Let's go and uh, park with Martin, as he's the man with the money. <laughs> Bingo. What a service you offer, sir. Yeah. I get told off for sitting on the bike when it's been refuelled. That's okay, I'm sure things go wrong. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> At least you're not Have you got a cigarette on you? <laughs> this is a proper guzzler, isn't it? Oh, it smells good this. Yeah, it is a bit of a guzzler. How much have you got left? I'm on half a tank, so... Uh, I'm on two thirds. Oh, wow. Yeah, thirsty old beast. Right, I've got my passport at the ready because this next leg is going to take us into Croatia. So that's going to be fun. The Harley boys are in town. Right, fully fueled for the next uh, hour or so as we wend our way through bear country up to Croatia where we're going to try and find a spot for lunch. It's quite remote though apparently so might take a bit of finding. Oh, there's one of those leaping gazelle signs, look. See that? So it turns out, talking of bears, as we were back there at that stop. Oh, there's one of those signs of the bike as well, look. Whatever that means. Anyway, yeah, so talking of bears, turns out that the uh, programme to protect the bears here in Slovenia has been pretty successful. And they've gone from sort of near extinction to very well populated here and in fact they've got more bears per square kilometre here than they have in Canada apparently and uh, there's Canadian I'm sure there'll be Canadian viewers that can correct me here if I'm incorrect here but uh, Pete was saying that uh, some of the Canadian bear experts have come over here to learn from the conservation program that Slovenia has been running for bears so that's uh, quite surprising they hadn't really uh, thought of Slovenia as being having an unusual wildlife as it were and also talking to Peter at that stop he was saying that people that live in that area we asked if there had been any deaths this year and apparently there has been one that he's aware of an old lady that was actually asleep in her back garden that got killed by a bear so 
backs up what I was saying earlier about not having a barbecue and sunbathing in your back garden if you're there. Even things like putting your bins out, they're in special cages to stop the bears attacking your bins or your trash. And apparently there are sort of rubbish areas within the woods where people specifically put food waste as food for bears to keep them away from the populated areas. So it's a pretty big and serious deal here. Right, off the main road, through the forest. Apparently we're going to pass through uh, an old military training ground that's now I think used by the police for training exercises. Hopefully I'll spot it. Apparently it looks just like a bit of a village but it's deserted. So let's see if we can find that amongst the leaping gazelles.